Space exploration has been the latest fascination from scientists for the past couple of years, and it looks like that is not going to change. NASA was set to launch an exploratory spacecraft on a mission around the moon on August 29, 2022, that has since been postponed until at least September 23, 2022. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at why the launch was postponed and why it matters. So stick around because you won't want to miss a second of this video. So what caused the launch of Artemis 1 to be postponed? People from all around America came together at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral on Monday, August 29th, 2022, to watch the newest milestone in space exploration, the Artemis 1. The goal of the mission was to fly from Earth, around the Moon, and back, in order to gather information about the fight in order to ensure that it is safe for human passengers. Right now, the mission will be unmanned with three mannequins, one male and two female, that will be fitted with gear that is meant to measure things like radiation levels, g-force, and other types of forces that humans will be affected by when they eventually take part in this mission. As of this recording, the launch has been postponed twice now, once on August 29th, and again on its original rescheduled date of September 2nd. Both times, the postponing of the launch was chalked up to a potential engine leaking issue with the third engine. Although the mission will be unmanned and it will be impossible to have any human casualties, there is simply no reason to send this ship to space if the mission is not going to perfectly resemble a manned mission. The whole reason for this mission is to ensure that it is safe for human travel, and if the data is not as close to real as it can possibly be, then there is no reason to go through with this mission until everything is exactly perfect. The issue is decidedly serious in nature, meaning that the ship could not only go off course or fail to launch, it could actually explode during spaceflight, costing NASA billions of dollars and countless years in what would be a massive setback for the mission and the world. If this mission is going to succeed, they need to have all of the controllable variables in check, and that obviously includes the engines functioning properly. The mission is primarily meant to stretch the ship to its limits to make sure it can withstand any possible outcome during the actual manned flight that is currently scheduled for 2024. Of course, as of this recording, the Artemis 1 test launch has yet to launch and is currently scheduled for September 23rd. But of course, if the engine bleeding issue is not resolved, the launch will be pushed back once again. The original path of the launch was set for one full trip around the backside of the moon, and then the ship would propel itself back towards Earth. The ship would launch from the Atlantic Ocean, circle the moon, and then come back down and land somewhere in the Pacific Ocean around six weeks after launch. While we are unsure as to when the engine bleeding problem will be fixed, we know that the original flight plan will continue to be the course of action when the time comes. Is the postponing of the launch a bad thing for NASA? I'm sure most of you watching saw that NASA had postponed this flight twice and assumed that this would be classified as nothing but a catastrophic failure. I mean, when the world's foremost leader in space exploration decides to cancel what is likely the most important space mission since the original Apollo lunar launch missions back in the 1960s. However, postponing these types of missions is actually no big deal for NASA or the progress of this mission. According to NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, last-minute postponings and even cancellations are pretty standard in the industry. Of course, you cannot see some issues in the spacecraft until the engines are primed and ready, which often exposes issues that were otherwise undetectable, leading to a last-minute postponement, which of course is exactly what happened in the case of the Artemis 1. Engine bleeding was cited as the cause of this postponement, which led to the engines needing to be filled with supercooled liquid oxygen and hydrogen to cool down the rocket's engines and stop the launch once they identified an issue with the third engine on board the spacecraft. Apparently, the engine was not able to reach the required temperature, meaning that some of the energy and lift power was funneling out of the engine in some way, which means that the engine would not have been able to perform at peak capacity, thus potentially resulting in a catastrophic failure. Until the issue is fixed, the launch will continue to be postponed, which is totally all right with NASA and their administrator, Bill Nelson. In a webcast following the original postponement, Nelson said, we don't launch until it's right. He continued on by saying, it's just illustrative that this is a very complicated machine, a very complicated system, and all those things have to work, and you don't want to light the candle until it's ready to go. This has apparently been the motto of NASA for the past decade or so, as this project is already hilariously overdue and over budget. Maybe because the space and rocket industry is such an expensive and complicated industry, we just assume that everything runs smooth. However, in this industry, things actually rarely run on time. The nature and importance of every launch means that nothing launches until everything is exactly perfect, which obviously requires a great deal of testing and preparation that will hopefully all line up for a successful launch of Artemis 1 in the near future. This project has been in the making for the past 10 years. Obviously, things of this nature take a great deal of planning and designing. However, this particular project has been in the development stage for way longer than originally estimated. This particular SLS, or Space Launch System, has been in development for the past decade or so, and the launch of this craft is about five years past its original launch date. According to the Planetary Society, this project has also overshot its budget by about $16 billion. Yes, you heard that right. $16 billion. The original project budget was roughly $7 billion, but as of this recording, the project has cost well over $23 billion and counting. But that shouldn't 
come as much of a surprise? The project has been postponed and held back for so long. Not only that, but this vessel in particular is the world's largest, most potent, and most sophisticated rocket ever made in human history. But of course, that is the sort of vessel that this type of mission requires. Of course, the Artemis one and the subsequent missions that follow are meant to act as precursors for manned missions to Mars, after they send people back to the moon for the first time in nearly 55 years. That's right, this mission is meant for much more than just putting humans back on the moon. The goal of the Artemis mission is to establish a long-term lunar outpost on the moon that will act as a jumping-off point for hopefully multiple manned mission to Mars. While this sounds amazing and is probably within our grasp, scientists are estimating that this project will not be completed until well into the 2030s. However, when this project is completed, there is no telling what we can accomplish. What could we do with a base of operation on the moon, and what does it mean for the future of the human race? Having a long-term base of operations on the moon can be the initial stepping stone that we need to further explore space and the wonders of the stars. Moreover, it will act as a pioneering mission for people living off Earth, and if it becomes a sustainable way of life, living off-planet could become a reality for eventually billions of people. Imagine what this type of mission can do for the future of the human race. There is a chance that this mission could advance our understanding of space and space travel by an exponential amount. In just a few decades, we could be seriously discussing the idea of having human colonies on Mars. And who knows, maybe after that, we could be seriously discussing the idea of human colonies on other planets as well. Although this project has been a bit of a headache for all involved, and has taken a hit on the wallet, there is simply no telling what a project like this could do for the future of the human race. Hopefully the launch that is scheduled for September 23rd will continue as planned, and we can get an accurate depiction of what this trip will look like for the brave men and women who take part in this journey. By 2024, hopefully, we will be watching as the first person of color and the first female astronaut take leap and bounds on the moon, both for themselves and for the entire human race. That's all we have for you guys today on the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the content, and we will see you all in the next video.